uh, in a number of different ways. I think for one, we'll be able to understand how a number of biological phenomena function. Uh, we'll be able to understand evolution better. Uh, we'll be able to deconstruct biology into its constituent circuits rather than constituent parts alone. And with that type of understanding, you can apply it towards, uh, say, medicine. And that would be uh, a predictive and preventive medicine. And that's something ISB is really focused on. The idea being having the knowledge of the genetic variation um, that makes each individual unique, we can then understand how those inter variations interact with one another and with the environment in a manner that you can predict the conditions or the complex diseases that a person might be uh, predisposed to. And an early diagnosis, as you know, for a number of different cases, also helps uh, prevention of the onset of disease. So you can change health habits, you can do drug interventions, and so that's, that's one application. Uh, the second is in actually uh, reversing effects that you might have already manifested. So you know there's a defect in a disease network, and if you know what the nature of the defect is, which could be in one or more genes, you can then reverse that in the gene therapy or drug intervention or what have you. Uh, in terms of uh, biotechnology, you can also take, say, microbes or plants, and you can understand the circuits that give them unique properties, and you can then re-engineer those properties to, to introduce some specific functions uh, that can address issues in, uh, say, bioenergy or bioremediation. Um, th the process would be synthetic biology, and we can talk about that later. Um, so th there's a number of different ways you can apply systems biology at multiple scales. You can even go from uh, single cells to uh, the influence of changes that happen at a single cell, single species level on ecosystem level changes, for example.